this podcast is from the archives and was originally recorded on October 12, 2020. Hello, hello, Michelle here. I am wanting to record this episode basically because I just had an epiphany and I want to share it with all of you. And it came about partly because I did a coaching call this morning and I said something that when I re- when I said it, I realized it was the first thing, the first time that I had had the thought. And if you were listening to last the last episode about what I think about having too many ideas, I mentioned how me starting to illustrate and do art again opened me up creatively to start writing my book that I'm writing titled The Magic Is You and how that led to other parts of my business unfolding. And I mentioned how I realized that I had stopped illustrating and painting and all of that because of a couple of traumatic experiences I've had as a young teenager that kind of made me put art away. And um, this morning on a coaching call, I had said, I was referring to this whole experience of how following my intuition led me to realize I want to do art again. And then from there, how it impacted other areas of my life and business. And I said that doing art allowed something inside of me to heal, which made it safe for me to express myself in another way, which was the book. And if you've been listening to the Michelle and Amy show for a while, or if you know anything about how we think around here, Amy and I are big on the inner work. We don't do anything just for the sake of, you know, like everything we do is based on intuition and doing the inner work and not distracting ourselves from the inner work. So even while we're doing things in our business, We leave plenty of space to take care of our mental health, to process, to acknowledge that the world is going through a lot right now. We go through a lot. It's not like business and life are separate. It's like you're a human being and you like, there's too many examples of businesses where people just act like business is their whole life instead of business just being a part of their life. And when I started to think more about the whole art thing, I realized that there was yet another traumatic experience associated with art, me doing art. And that was um, a memory that I had forgotten for a long time. And then around seven or eight years ago, I remembered it. But only today did, did I remember it in an, in an even deeper context because of this whole picking up art again. And it's a memory of being a kindergartner. I went to school all the way up to first first grade, I think, or maybe even just kindergarten. And then the rest of it, I was homeschooled. But I did go to quote unquote real school in kindergarten. And there's a memory where the teacher wanted all the students to write their ABCs on paper. And I just thought, well, I want to draw a picture of a house. And so while everyone was drawing their ABCs, I was drawing a picture of a house. And I remember what I thought in my head. I did not think I was doing anything wrong. I just thought, I want to draw a picture of a house. (laughs) I wasn't trying to be defiant or rebellious. I was just being a kid. And I remember the teacher, I think maybe she told me, 
more like twice to draw ABCs instead. And I kept drawing my house and he took out a wooden paddle, which I, they probably don't do in schools today, but he took out this wooden paddle and spanked me in front of the entire class. And I don't even remember if I felt embarrassment about being spanked in front of all of my classmates. I, but I remember feeling painfully confused because I did not feel or think or see how I did anything wrong. But I was punished as if I did something wrong. And uh, I wrote a blog post about that incident uh, years, like, like seven or eight years ago when the memory came back. I wrote a blog post about it. And I, I just saw it as a metaphor for how society wants you to fit in. They want you to be part of a system, be the peg in the hole. Otherwise, they don't know what to do with you. And then when you're an adult, you're struggling to honor your gifts because growing up, you were never nurtured in your gifts. You were always forced to do what everyone else was doing. And since being really, really small, since kindergarten and earlier, I was always a creative person, but it really wasn't until later that I really started to be able to embrace it. And now I'm seeing how, like, I was just in the shower and it just occurred to me that me picking up art again, not only has that led to me writing the book and everything, but it is part of, it's like my intuition was saying, Michelle, it's time to heal that kindergartner. It's time to let her feel safe. Because that, that was the confusion. And I might cry now. I was crying in the bathroom after I came out of the shower, but I just realized that it's like the kindergartner version of me was saying, let's, let's make this okay. And this is why I am so passionate about business not being something that women put on themselves to turn into another version of the classroom where you're always looking for what, uh, what is everyone else doing? What does the expert, the quote unquote teacher say that I should do? And it just perpetuates the, it perpetuates the ugliness of being punished for being yourself. So I really, if, if you haven't gotten the message of this show or of the Secret Owl Society, the brand, this podcast, it's you come first because your whole life you were not allowed to come first. And until you can come first and make that safe and make that okay and make that how you operate in the world, then it just continue, continues to perpetuate the trauma of not feeling safe in your own genius, in your own gifts, in your own personality. And it's something that I'm so like, it's like, I think it's part of my superpower. It's like, I can literally sense the power inside of someone and I can see how they are not even seeing that they have this power because they've been conditioned to not see it. 
because if you were to see it and if you were to accept how powerful you are, the world would not know what to do with you. And the world wants to know what to do with you so that they can put you, put you in your box and make you be part of the system. And it's like I have this sense where if, if someone comes to me and they're like, hey, I need, I need help with my Pinterest strategy, or can you tell me how I can pick a niche, or like stuff like that, which doesn't happen often because I do not put out that I teach this stuff anyway. I'm always kind of like telling people it's a distraction until they figure out who they are in the first place. If anyone comes to me like trying to make SEO the thing they need to figure out or ads or strategies, the thing that they need to figure out, like I will hear and read what they're saying, but all I can really, really see and really hear is the little girl inside of them just crying crying, just waiting for them to to pay attention to themselves and heal themselves and take care of themselves so that that little girl can finally feel safe. And I think that's really why I just, I'm like, screw the niches. (laughs) Screw figuring out how to serve your audience. Please just Take some time to serve yourself. Take some time to take care of yourself. Why are you trying to go out there and change the world when you are literally walking wounded? Like you are hurting and you need to help yourself. I'm not saying that you need to be completely healed and perfect in this little Buddha on a mountain or something in order to go out there and finally do something amazing in the world. But don't ignore the fact that There are things within you that need healing, that need attention, your attention. And I see so many people using their business as a way to distract themselves from what needs their attention. From like, I use business as a way to see myself more clearly, see where I am engaging in avoidance behavior, use business as a way to break patterns that came out of dysfunction and trauma. And that's because I have the right perspective where I know it's a tool to grow myself as a person. And only from there can I turn around and help other people. And I can always sense when someone is quote unquote, trying to help other people, but really they're just using it as a way to distract themselves from themselves. And that doesn't help anyone. That just perpetuates dysfunction because you can't help anyone else until you help yourself. And you don't need to wait until you're perfectly perfect in order to help other people, but you need to at least be aware that that is the most important thing. The most important thing is you. It's not your nits. It's not your audience. It's not what social media platform you pick. It's not what customer avatar you pick. It's you. And when you really make you the most important thing, everything else will just flow and you will attract who you're meant to attract, whether or not you figure out who they are, they will come to you. So I wanted to share this because that's how I do this podcast. I literally am like, oh, I just had an epiphany or, oh, something just made me angry. I'm going to go talk about it (laughs) and share it with the world. Um, But yeah, so that was this episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I was just talking to Amy this morning. You might be hearing from Amy in a future episode, Um, so stay tuned for that. We have some cool ideas for this podcast, and we're keeping it organic. We're keeping it natural. We're keeping it working for our lives. You know, I live in Miami. Amy lives in England. I have two kids, and the way that this show is going, it's just evolving and adapting to 
to our lives because we're putting ourselves first. We're not obsessing. It's another example. We don't obsess over, oh my gosh, our audience needs us to publish a podcast every week. It's We've never done the podcast or the YouTube show that way. It has always been us first. What feels good for us? And if that means taking a break, we take a break. If that means I do the show alone so that we don't stress out over coordinating, doing it together, that's what we do. And that's what I mean. That's what it looks like in action to put yourself first. And guess what? Everyone's okay. We're okay. You're okay. (laughs) And this is the kind of attitude that you can have in your business. And it makes it safe for you to be yourself. It makes it safe for you to take care of yourself and realize that the world is going to be okay. Okay.